So you wrote a great program that runs silently until all of a sudden, it drops an exception. You want to know what led up to this error, but scattering print statements isn't going to cut it. That's when you need to turn to logging. Stick with me and you'll learn everything you need to reveal your program's runtime mysteries. Welcome back to Understanding Python. My name is Jake, and today we'll be delving into an essential tool for all non-trivial programs, logging. We'll start off with creating and using loggers, understanding the importance of log levels for fine-grained control, and even learn how to store these messages in a dedicated file for future analysis. As we go, if you learned something new, let me know by liking the video. Now let's get started. And getting started with logging in Python is incredibly easy. All we really need to do is to import the logging module, then start making logging calls. And what do these calls look like? Well, for now, we're just going to call logging and then call the corresponding method for the log level that we want to use. We'll start with debug and simply say in here, this is a debug message. And there we go. We've created a debug log message. I'll explain the different levels in a minute, but for now, let's just get them all out so we can see what they look like. And the next one up is info, followed by warning. After warning is error. And then finally, we have critical. OK, now we have five different logging statements at five different logging levels. So let's see what this looks like by running our fake app here. And here we see three of the messages. But why are we only seeing warning, error, and critical? Well, the reason for this is the default log level of Python's logger is warning, which means anything below warning in severity is ignored. So even though we've made these calls, the logger checks to see if that level is at or above its current log level, and then decides if it's going to process the log message or not. This is one of the great advantages versus just printing things, is that you can very easily toggle the level of messages that your app is going to give out. If up until now you've just been using print statements, well first, I've been there, I totally understand. But more importantly, you no longer have to worry about adding and then removing or just commenting out a bunch of print statements in your code base. You can instead just add different level log statements and then modify your logging level at runtime. Well, how do we modify this log level? Luckily, again, Python makes this really easy for us. We can change the log level of this default logger by calling logging.basicconfig. And in here, we have a number of options that we can pass in, but for now, we're just interested in setting the level. And this is going to be equal to logging.info. And if we save our app and run it again, we now see we have info level message going. We change it to debug. Just as you expect, we also have our debug messages as well. OK, so let's talk about these levels. The first and lowest level we have is debug. This is typically detailed information that most users likely shouldn't see. These could be things like API responses, important variable values, or anything that you think would be useful to help you track down potential bugs in your program by tracing your program's execution. Next up is info. And info is the level that I typically set my debuggers to because info level messages should typically show progress information that users are more likely interested in. These messages should also show normal program flow and success. Next up is Python's default warning. And these are typically problems that your program can adjust to. Things that the user likely should take some action to avoid in the future. Some examples of these would be things like deprecation messages, or they're using an API which is going to be going away in the near future. Next up are error messages. These are typically exceptions or other errors the program encounters during runtime. These are likely going to be followed by raising some exception, but not always. And the last up and least rarely seen, at least in my experience, is critical. These are fatal exceptions or system level issues. Personally, I think there's a bit of a blur between what constitutes error and what constitutes critical. But if you encounter a project that you think uses critical well, in a way that distinguishes it from normal errors, please put that in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to check that out. Now, before we go on, I wanna take a quick look at something with you. And for that, 
We'll load up IPython and import logging. Because on line four, I passed in logging.debug. And this debug, as you can see, it's all uppercase, is a constant. Well, what exactly is it? Well, if we take a look at it, we see it's just the integer 10. We can verify its type and see, yes, indeed, it's just an integer. What about the others? Like info, this is 20. You may have guessed based on the trend what's coming next with the warning, and that's 30. Error is 40 and critical is 50. And while we could definitely pass in these integer values directly to basic config here, setting the level equal to 30, which is effectively what we're doing, it's much less readable to see a 30 there than it is to see logging.warning, which is why I'm putting logging.debug instead of level is equal to 10. Well, not only can you specify a level using these constants or the direct integers, but you can also set the level using their common names, but making sure that it's all uppercase. Never seen info log message works, but the debug one didn't. If you're ever curious of what values you can pass in, you can check logging dot underscore name to level. And this provides a handy dictionary, which Python uses to look up the corresponding values. Here you see the mapping of info to 20. But for now, I'd recommend sticking to the version we see in the constants. Okay, so we have some basic messages being printed out, but these look pretty plain. Let's take some time to make these more interesting. In order to do that, we'll first need to get our own logger so we can really customize its behavior. So we'll stop calling the logging.basicconfig and instead get our own logger by calling logging.getLogger. And in here you have two main options because it's expecting a name for your logger. The first of these choices is a pretty common convention that you'll see by passing in Dunder name. And if you remember back to the very first episode in this series, Dunder name can mean different things depending on how this file is called and the context of where it's in. So while this might be fine for very basic applications, I'm personally not a fan. And instead, I like to give explicit names to my loggers. So instead of Dunder name, we're going to call this my app. And the neat thing about this is if we were to do the same thing in multiple files within our app, say it wasn't just a single file application, we would get the same logger every time. So now that we have our own logger, let's go ahead and replace these calls from logging dot whatever level to logger. And if we save that and test it out right now, we see some interesting things happen. First, we lost both our debug and info level messages. And second, we also lost this formatting here. But why is this? Well, the reason why we lost the extra messages is that we haven't actually set a log level for our logger. And since we're also not setting on Python's default logger or its root logger, it now falls back to its original default of only logging messages that are warning and higher. So in order for us to solve this, we can call logger.setLevel and again pass in logging. Dot. This time we'll go with info. Now to handle formatting, we're not going to use this format that we saw here as I'm not personally a big fan of it. I like to have a little bit more information, but thankfully we have a lot of options when it comes to setting custom formats for our log messages. And the way that we're going to do that is to create our own formatter. This is what we'll use to really tailor our log messages to the style that we want. So we'll say formatter is equal to logging.formatter. And we'll split this into multiple lines because we're going to pass in quite a bit into it. The first argument is going to be the format string itself. So we're going to say format or FMT is equal to, and we can start typing out the kind of string that we want. And this version that you see on screen now is still pretty basic but it's a good simple message format to present to your users. So the formatting here might look a bit crazy, but let's take this one at a time. Here we see percent sign followed by some attribute name and then an S. This largely inherits from the more old style version of string formatting in Python, where you note the formatting with a percent sign and then the type of data that's being put into the string after that. In this case, each of these will be strings. So in here, we're gonna include the level name meaning debug, info, warning, etc. 
the name of the logger itself. So instead of being the root logger, it'll be my app followed by an ASCII timecode. All of this meta information, we're going to encapsulate in some square brackets followed by the actual log message itself. Now, if you're not a fan of looking at the format string like it is now, as I'm not, we can use a more modern style of format string. And that looks like this, much cleaner in my opinion. However, we do have to add a new argument in here, specifying that the style is equal to one of these three. And the style that we chose is the curly brace. So we'll put that in there now. This lets Python know what type of string replacement it needs to use to format our log message. Okay, now that we have a formatter, we'll next need to make a new handler. Handlers are what actually emit the log messages themselves. And since we still want this to go to standard out, we'll just use the default stream handler as is. We just need to add the formatter to our handler. And finally, add the handler to our logger. So when we're calling logger.debug, we're passing this message to our handler, which is then going to take that message and pass it through our formatter. And our formatter is going to take care of injecting the level name, the logger name, the ASCII time, and then finally the actual message that we're passing into log. Okay, so with all this written out, let's give ourselves some room and try it again. And here we see our new formatting. Not only that, we also have our info level message. So we have our logging metadata on the left hand side separated from the actual message itself within these square brackets with the level of the message, the name of our app, and the date and time that it was logged. Now that's quite a bit for me and I don't think we need to put all that in there. So instead what we can do is we can modify our formatter to specify a specific date format. And in here for the format, I'm going to use percent %h, percent %m, and percent %s, each of those separated by a colon, because I don't really need the exact date itself that it happened or the exact milliseconds. So if you save and run that again, we now see something a lot more clean. Very nice. Now there's a lot when it comes to formatting and handlers that we're not gonna get into in this video, However, we will dive into a lot more information about these in upcoming videos. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Okay, so our log messages look great, but our users aren't happy because all of these log messages are cluttering up standard output. Well, this is something that we can easily remedy by switching from logging everything to standard out by default to standard error by default. In order to do that, we're going to import sys and then our stream handler, which expects some kind of stream, we're going to pass it sys.standardError. And if we run this now, things don't really look any different. However, since I'm on Linux, we can do some things to test this out. So first, let's add in a couple print messages. Because print, by default, is going to go to standard out. So we'll redirect one, or standard out, to a file called standardout.log. And then two, which is standard error to standard error dot log. We run this. We don't see anything because we've redirected the output. However, if we were to look inside standard out, we see I'm here first, I'm here last. And if we look inside standard error, we see all of our log messages. Pretty neat, right? This way you can keep things like standard out clean for things that use your app for automation, but you can still use standard error present information to the console that looks like it's mixed in with everything else. But we don't have to stop there because one of the great advantages of using logging is to be able to log to files. So for us to log to a file, we'll create a new file handler, which will be an instance of logging that file handler. And we're just going to pass in my app dot log as what we're going to log to. Now there's a lot more we can do with these handlers, but we're not going to dig into that now. That's more something for a future video. We can again set our formatter, the same formatter, on our file handler. Alternatively, what you can do is have different formatters for each of these. Say you wanted more information in your file formatter than you did with your standard out formatter. 
This might be useful if you did want all that date specific information as well. And since we don't care as much about the file being cluttered up as we would console output, we can also set a different log level for our file handler. So we'll call set level on that. And instead of info, we'll use debug. And then finally, we're going to add that new file handler to our logger. So we can have multiple handlers per logger. So when we call logger.warning here, it's passing this message not only to our stream handler, but also to our file handler. However, this isn't going to work just yet. And that's because even though our file handler is set to debug, our main logger is still set to info. So when we call debug, the logger itself is never going to pass that along, even though our underlying handler is at a lower level. So in order to fix this, we're going to set our logger to the lowest level that we want any of our handlers at, and that our handlers need to have specific levels for each other. So what we'll do is we'll set a new level for our original stream handler, setting this one to info. This way, when we call debug here, it's going to pass that debug message along to both of our handlers. Our stream handler won't do anything with it because it's set to info, but our file handler is going to take that and log it out because it is set to debug. All right, let's run this and see what it looks like. Okay, our console looks exactly the same. However, when we open myapp.log, we see we have not only the log messages we have in our console, but also this debug level message. This also shows us the separation between our standard out printed messages and our log messages. And that wraps up this video. Now that you understand the basics of logging, you should start incorporating it into your apps and maybe even scripts. And let me know how that goes. What's your favorite logging trick? Or was it something I showed today? Leave a comment down below to let me know. This will be the first of likely a few logging videos because there's a lot that Python offers when it comes to logging. In the future, I may also cover some third-party logging libraries that you can use instead of writing your own loggers. As always, today's code will be added to the understanding GitHub repo. So check the description for a link. And of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment for me. To keep up with the series, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.